I was a believer. I was a Shia Muslim. Uh, it's a little bit different than Sunni Islam, which is the Islam I think a lot of people are familiar with. Shia is a little bit different. It's the kind they practice in Iran. I believed for a long time and I participated in the local community in Houston, Texas, which is actually a pretty large community of Muslims. And I did that for a long time uh, until I decided that it, it, it doesn't make any sense. Philosophy was, made a big dent. Um, thinking about just uh, morality and how do we um, get certain concepts and how do we determine right from wrong. Um, it made, it's, as soon as I started looking into what Islam really wanted out of me and what they wanted me to believe, I thought that uh, a lot of this just doesn't feel good or moral or right. So um, that was, I think, the first thing that I started thinking about before I left. Islam is a is a gendered religion in the sense that if you are a Muslim or if you're a Muslim woman and you're a Muslim man, you're going to pr practice Islam very differently. Those mean very different things to you. What it means to be a good person is two very different things because those roles are set out for you pretty early. Uh, that was something that fundamentally didn't feel right to me at my core, especially since I grew up in in the West. So I could see that there were people who lived a more egalitarian life, and that felt um, on a very on a very deep level more fair. Um, more correct. Um, and so then when I started to look into that, especially the role of women in Islam, I found it to be uh, something that was quite harmful to a lot of women and uh, allowed for a lot of oppressions to go on. Well, it's interesting because I believe that too when I was a Muslim. Uh, I was told that Islam uh, liberated women, that it was the best religion for women, and when Muhammad came, he gave women rights that they never had before. And uh, I, I believed that, I bought that, and I thought that by, by making me cover up or encouraging me to cover up, uh, they were protecting me from, from the evils of the world, and that's because I was special. I was something, uh, that's how they phrase it anyway, that, that you are particularly special, and that's why you are covered up, like a diamond, they say. Um, so I actually felt uh, that Islam was good for me until I really started looking into the specifics of it. I started looking into uh, what a, a woman's worth is. Uh, for example, there's a lot of specific parts of Islam that dedicate you know, two witnesses that are female for every one male um, in court. Sharia law tells you how inheritance with men and women is different, and it doesn't really make any sense why a daughter would get less inheritance than, than a son. And so when you look at it through that, through that perspective, it's very clear that it's not an egalitarian religion. I'm an atheist and I'm a humanist, I'm a free thinker. I call myself all those things. Um, I think they mean different things to me and I, I ascribe my, those labels to myself. I left religion around the age of 16. Uh, I met my first ex-Muslim at the age of 21, 22. And then we decided that it'd be good to start an organization where other people can see the benefits of meeting people like them and having that support. And so we started the ex-Muslims in North America. We don't proselytize, so it is uh, we're giving comfort and support to those who have already who have already left. I mean, I'm a civil libertarian, so I think that if you are a Muslim and you believe certain things, you have every right to believe that in the privacy of your own home. I have a problem when those beliefs start harming other people, when they start harming women, when they start harming children. That's when I have a problem, and that's when I want to get involved. Otherwise, if you know that you're going to do whatever you want in the privacy of your own home, that's perfectly fine with me. So I don't really proselytize. Um, but those who have decided that it's not the religion for them, because it is so difficult to leave, um, if you are a Muslim, because it is so difficult, um, I think it's really important to have those support and community networks. I'm very passionate about free speech. And it's especially important, I think, now when we're talking about Islamophobia and we're talking about hate speech and how criticism of Islam can be construed to be hate speech. Some people believe that. I don't. Um, I think anti-Muslim bigotry, which is bigotry against Muslim as a people, and criticism of Islam are two very different concepts. And it's very important that we hold them apart as much as possible so that our dialogue can be constructive, truly constructive. And there's so many people who want Islamophobia to mean, and so many Muslims, uh, 
especially who want Islamophobia to mean criticism of the religion as well, not just the people. They want to conflate those two terms because it's good for them. They don't want people to talk about their faith um, in a negative way. And I think that that's, um, that, that's just a, such a harmful way of continuing. So I want to encourage people not to use terms like that and openly criticize all bad ideas. I know when, when I decided, when I thought to myself, I think I'm an atheist. I think I'm not going to buy any of this. It felt like a weight was just lifted off my shoulders and the world felt like a bigger and more beautiful place immediately. I mean, it was shocking and it was and it was kind of scary because there's, now there was this chaos that didn't exist when my world was ordered uh, in the way that Allah wanted it to be. But when I, when I removed that, that burden from my shoulders, it was just such a more exciting place to be in. And it made some of the, the harmful aspects of leaving religion a little bit easier to bear.